Carrillo y estamos en el barrio Sherman, en la comunidad Sherman, donde la mayoría de personas son de origen mexicano, barrio mexicoamericano. Estamos enfrente de donde yo viví durante 22 años y, y como en estos tiempos están este, desalojando a todas las personas que vivimos en esta área. Dice que quieren embellecer la ciudad por el Valpar y están desalojando a toda la comunidad, a todas las personas que viven en esta área. es que a lot of old Victorian houses became a small apartment. Y lo que está pasando es that since the property is going up with the buffer being... I think it was just heartbroken for everyone, especially for my mom, when, they, when she got evicted. I mean, she didn't even start packing like a week before because she still had that, she was praying so hard that a miracle will happen for her to stay, you know? And that's and I just talked to her last week, and that's what she was saying. I go, Mom, how can you didn't start parking a, you know, a week before? You know, you were struggling. To, she's like, I thought I was waiting for a miracle. Pues feo, sentí feo, porque porque yo pues yo no lo esperaba, porque el dueño a mí me tenía bueno, yo sentía que me tenía afecto y confianza, verdad? Pero tú sabes las envidias de la otra manejadora las envidias de los inquilinos, las envidias de toda la gente, ¿verdad? Pues, o sea, le, como quien dice, le lavan el cerebro al dueño para que, para que cambiara completamente la, la opinión, ¿verdad? Sobre mí. The, some of the changes I've noticed is um, in the last five years is that, well, housing costs keep going up, you know, rents keep going up, people keep, um, the majority of people that live here are renters and are working pretty hard, two jobs and, you know, they're hardworking people and so they're just trying to live and survive. Both my parents are workers. One works in a restaurant, the other one has been working in a laundromat. Put together income that we can no longer afford this place. When this is the place that the only affordability we had. Y la ley no pone un hasta aquí. No dice, no más aumento de rentas. No pone, no, la ley los está dejando, ellos están dando vuelo. So in the last, um, the last couple of years, um, because they're predominantly renters, um, all of the absentee landlords, you know, they're they're trying to make money. That's that's what this that's what this is about. It's how can you make the biggest profit? So rents are going up. So families are, are hurting. You know, people are becoming homeless. People are living in overcrowded conditions. You know, having to share a one bedroom with two families. You know, things like that. So I've seen that more and more families that are working really hard, that are a major part of our society of our community are just, you know, they're, they're, they're just suffering even worse, you know. What makes this community more vulnerable is that it was so close to the ballpark and we're a walking distance of the ballpark, so it makes this area very attractive. At the same time, we've been educated that the fact that they have not been building a lot of housing and the demand of housing is growing and, and not only to people from, um, who are low income but also middle class, but the thing is that the low income are being more affected. So uh, everything is changing. And, and it, to me it's sad, you know, it is sad. So that's why we organized Doodle, you know, to work on these gentrification problems, to maintain our families together, to, to do something about it. If no one's going to work on it, nobody's going to listen, then we have, we, we're going to do something about it. La, la razón que llamamos esta junta es para lo que está pasando, no sé si están informados, que en la 22 y comercial hay un lote vacío. I've also been um, 
a volunteer and one of the founders of Duro, uh, which is a grassroots effort to address the, the housing issues in, in the barrio. There is a need to add housing that's been lost over the years. A lot of housing has been lost uh, uh, because of the freeways. I, I remember very clearly all the homes that were destroyed when it, Interstate 5 uh, was built. Uh, when the Coronado Bridge was built, I witnessed all that. And I, I'm saddened to say that that is continuing. It's a major challenge. Every time I look at the newspaper and I see like the market and the houses going up and up and up, and it's a little bit depressing. And I always think that we have to have hope and we have to think that we have to, to look for other alternatives. We have to think out of the box. And one of the things San Diego has not done is think out of the box. So there's a lot of plans going on. First, they are taking away the affordable housing, which was this community. They're not building new housing. They're not building affordable housing. They're not spreading the information. How can our parents own their housing? You know, there's a lot of things. And I don't know. So that's what we're digging, like to get more information about. Our community in the late 80s, got really united. I remember my mom used to take us to like cleanups, used to like, we had like meetings. I think even cars of police came and stationed at different corners. So people have built that, um, that emotional and psychological connection with their neighborhood. They love it. They're, they feel like they're a part of it. And, um, and so when they're displaced and they're forced to be moved out really far, it just cause I've seen families who, you know, get depressed, you know, and who just, it impacts just the way they feel about themselves, their attitude, their, you know, every, their whole, their whole um, way of, of just a living. So hard that my parents work and it's not for you. It's for other people. And what makes that other people better than my parents? Because the other people, you know, had an education and they had an opportunity to have an education or because those other people had more money than my parents. But let me tell you, because my parents, you know, they work so hard to maintain this community, to clean this community, and to work, you know, they are the people who give the service. If anything, they deserve to, to live here. And now when we were see, now that I'm seeing it change, I'm like, dang, I don't even gonna have this community to come back to. Because there might be a risk that this community might be just a parking lot to the service of the ballpark. You know, just look at our stores. They used to be called Sherman Heights, you know, stores. Now they're called ballpark stores. In our neighborhoods, we need to educate ourselves about those opportunities that are out there and how we can be um, creating different models of housing that are not just the two rent or own, but they're cooperatives, they're community land trusts, there's you know all sorts of different things. And I think we need to do that if we want to really have an impact on, on what's happening to neighborhoods because the housing, like I said, that's the core of the community and once that becomes you know broken the entire family is shattered and if a family shattered the community is shattered if a neighborhood shattered our city is shattered so we have a responsibility physically we have not died but spiritually we're dying because i mean just i mean just by telling you this it's been really really hard really hard to maintain our family together. It's been like really hard because we don't have a space. And, but like I said, that, that keeps us together.